won Los Alamos, raced in Santa Fe, alumni of both UNM and UNM Law School. She served under three different uh, governors, Governor King, Gary Johnson, and Bill Richardson, at cabinet level positions. And if that's not enough, okay, then she was county commissioner, Bernadette County Commissioner. And then, not to be held back, she now represents, starting this year, represents the first congressional district of New Mexico in the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Michelle Lehan Grisham comes from a long line of active and distinguished New Mexican politicians and activists, and I'm excited to welcome her to the stage, Congressman. Wow. You guys are so great to hang out here and wait for me. And I want to tell you what kind of leadership you have. So I talked to Tom last week, and he said, oh, we know your staff is coming to our climate change rally. But you know, it's really about a partnership. The folks that are elected to represent us and the folks on the ground, and it's working together to make a difference and to challenge everybody who's not involved, right? Not involved in doing the most important thing, saving the planet. And uh, I said, oh, Tom, that is the most important thing, but I'm, I'm flying to Israel. There's 35 uh, uh, members of my freshman class. I'm the president of the class. I, I have to go on this trip. We're all staying over the weekend and getting organized, and then we're flying away early, early, early Sunday morning. I just, I just don't think I can do it. And he said, well, I understand. But, you know, it is the most important thing. It is the only thing. It really matters today. And you know what? Tom is right. And so I rearranged my travel schedule and I flew here and I'd like to say it's all about you, but I did think I might be able to get one more enchilada before I headed off. So it's the combination of loving where I live and having this remind me about what's really important. And I know that it's all stuff that you've heard. It's we're, we're not making the kind of headway that we ought to be making. You don't need to have any of the facts from me because you know it. I just heard uh, in Heinrich's letter, and he's right, worse drought. We're seeing the effects of climate change. For those of you who haven't lived here your whole life, but have been here even a short while, you can really see the dramatic changes. And while I'm accustomed to a monsoon season, I'm not accustomed to an environment where we have pre-hurricane weather in the southwest. I know that you know that we're beginning to deal in the Science and Technology Committee with the real effects, the real scientific effects of having Siberia melt and releasing billions of tons of methane into the atmosphere. I'm not sure about how damaging, more than the obvious, that this is in the short term and the long term. And here's what we're doing in the House. In the House, I got to vote twice against two bills that do nothing except erode any movement to protect the earth, to address climate change, and to reinvest in renewable energy. One's called the uh, Consumer Energy Relief Act, which defunds EPA. And the other is called RAINS, which is, to uh, be very clear, that we aren't going to invest in renewable energy. All right? they're, they're both terrible bills, and, they're in t and they don't go anywhere. I mean, so I'm going to tell you a little bit, and then I hope I'm going to end on something really positive. So my role in the House is to stand with everyone, make sure that there's a strong democratic voice for the things that are scientifically sound and proven, to focus on the quality of life for this generation and all the generations who are coming behind us, and to create a clean energy environment that is also a job security future for everyone. And this is stuff that we know that makes absolute sense, that improves and deals with the real problems we're facing today. And that message you know, goes to the administration, and that message goes to the Senate, because they won't take up any of the bills that we pass in the House. Not a single one, all right? They just, they just die. I think the last bill I voted on before being back in the district and going on my trip to Israel was the 40th repeal of the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> That's I, I'm going to remind you guys of something, because, and, and whoever you are, 
Democrats, independents, decline the state, Republicans. When, when, when Republicans passed Medicare Part D, interestingly enough, a program that today works, and we wanted a different prescription drug plan for seniors. And I think the Democrats were concerned that we were using insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies in an environment that we couldn't afford, and today we're having some issues with that. But basically, not a single Democrat voted for Medicare Part D. Very few. But not once did Democrats vote to repeal it. And not once did Democratic senators or House members try to destroy it. And not once did one of those offices refuse to get it implemented so that the people who need it take advantage of the things that can make a difference in their lives, even if you have a philosophical disagreement. All right? Now, put that in perspective today. When you get the highest uninsured rate, one of the highest in the country, highest disability rate, worst place in the nation to raise a child, significant issues that every person here, regardless of your politics, believes we should do something to address. And we've spent our efforts 40 times to, re to repeal the law. And there are many House members across the country that are refusing to help any of their constituents. So if you call those offices, they tell you, we don't believe in the law, we won't help you. And you shouldn't either. Now can you imagine? This is, this is the climate in Washington. So how does that have anything to do with what you're doing today? If you don't stand up and make it clear to this community what your priorities are, and if you're not willing to spend a morning and an afternoon focusing on climate change and saving the earth and creating a clean economy for the future, which New Mexico could benefit from more than most other states in the country. There's no reason that, reason that we're not the solar and wind capital of the United States. There's no reason that that's not our core export. If you don't do that, it doesn't get done. My voice alone, to some degree, particularly today, is a bit irrelevant, but your voice isn't. Because when people see you and they drive across that bridge, when I drive across that bridge, when Tom Solomon shows me that photo, well then I'm inspired to keep flying back here every weekend. Because every mind that we change, thank you, every, every step we take forward means that we're making a difference, even if we can't feel it all in the moment that we're working so hard. And that's what you keep me feeling like I can make a difference in Washington. So now let's turn around what some of the positives are. There's a multitude of bills, including the uh, Public Lands Renewable, Renewable Energy Act, which I'm a co-sponsor of, which we've all introduced that set a framework for legislation that can make a difference to reinvest and to address climate change. The president is very clear about climate change. I know that you know that he's addressing that as a priority. He's been very clear about the reductions in carbon emissions. And there's movement in the Senate. And there's a, a, a terrific cohort in the House, including now, this is the best news, including moderate Republicans. Now, they're nervous about voting, and they're too nervous to stand up. So, in the back of our cloakroom in the halls of Congress, in a moment or two on the floor when they're voting, in a special moment that's not caught on camera, in the committee room, in my office, and in somebody else's office, there's a movement. And it's slow, and it's sheer, and it's steady, and it inspires me that we're going to push out extremism in the halls of Congress, and that reasonable people are going to stand up and believe in the science and do the right thing. And I might not agree with every model Republican on how we turn these investments forward, but I'm going to tell you it's not going to be a fight to go back to zero renewable energy investments, that we're only going to focus on the coal producing states, that we're going to continue to release toxins into the environment and not care about the planet, not today, not tomorrow, that those kinds of extremists are being asked to leave the halls of Congress. And when you stand up there, it gives courage to those folks across the country. Now, I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. You're not going to see enough evidence of that. I'm not even sure you're going to see enough evidence of that in 2014, but you will in 2015. And I think at the end of those 2014 elections, it will be better and brighter, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling optimistic, 
even though I'm a little frustrated, okay, I'm a lot frustrated about immigration reform, but I haven't given up. And that's why I'm here today, because you haven't given up. And you know what? There are things that we can do on the ground here in New Mexico to make a difference. And you're doing that, and we have local legislators, and we have the county, and we have the city, and they have an obligation to make sure that we're enforcing clean air standards, and make sure that we're enforcing our carbon emission standards with vehicles, and to make sure that the state is pushing those forward. And if we don't get them signed in the law by this governor, municipalities can get them signed, and we take hostage these issues in a productive way, mile by mile, minute by minute, community by community, because New Mexico is worth it. The country is worth it. The world is worth it. You are worth it. And I am proud to stand with you. And thank you so much for letting me come in today. You've made my whole weekend. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I don't know what happens next. I get off the stage and just thank you from the bottoms of my heart. Thank you, Tony.